It started as most things do with my boredom. I was surfing around YouTube looking for funny videos or scary videos when I stumbled across something that caught my interest. It was run by a user who went by The Meat Man and involved stop motion footage using some very disturbing puppets. The thing that honestly caught my eye first was the thumbnail. It was a figure that appeared to be crafted entirely out of ground meat. I remember seeing the model and lifting an eyebrow as I took in what I was seeing. Now when I tell you that the models were grotesque, I don't mean that they were ugly or they were badly made. I mean, they were very well put together and the amount of detail that had gone into them was astonishing. These meat puppets had hair and clothes and facial features. Ones that had been meticulously crafted to the point of being a little uncanny. I would have almost expected them to blink or move on their own, and they seemed too lifelike for the medium. The episode I had found was episode 5, and as I watched it, I quickly began to realize that this was no normal bit of YouTube content. Episode 5 involved three characters, Lisa, Steve, and Michael, as they prepared for the arrival of their fourth character, Dawn. The background music was jangly and discordant, somewhere between a calliope and a merry-go-round, and it often made the voices hard to hear. The characters were cleaning up the house, which was mostly a sheet of paper with windows drawn near the ceiling, and some furniture crafted from modeling clay. As they cleaned, a voice told us how Lisa had been lazy and expecting Michael and Steve to do the majority of the work. I remember thinking this was odd because her character moved and dusted and tidied at least as much as the others, and they seemed to be working well together. After a few minutes of herky-jerky cleaning, a hand came down from the ceiling and congratulated Steve and Michael on a job well done. It then pointed a pudgy finger at Lisa and scolded her for being so lazy. The voice said that Lisa would not be able to join the party later, since she hadn't helped. As Michael and Steve walked off stage, Lisa's character curled into a ball as loud party music played in the background. I remember feeling bad as the last frame set frozen in place, the camera zooming in on Lisa as she sat hunkered against a wall. Though I couldn't hear anything over the loud party music, I could see the small figure shaking a little. I thought that she might be crying. What the hell was this? You know, and... Why did it suddenly make me feel almost voyeuristic for watching the suffering of this lumpy, not person? After that, my morbid curiosity was hooked. I went to the attached channel and saw that he had about 10 videos up, all added within the last month or two. This channel was small, only about 8 subscribers. They were all in the style of stop motion, where he used the figure's grotesqueness to his advantage. I found the first episode, Friendship, and decided to watch. The video was about Lisa, the meat puppet from earlier, and how she was sad and lonely all by herself. The puppet mostly sat in the same familiar position, bent over and appearing to sob. Suddenly, two other familiar puppets, Steve and Michael, came into the scene, and Lisa looked up and seemed happy to see them. The pudgy hand, which she called Father, said that he had seen that she was lonely and had gotten some friends, so that she wouldn't cry so much. The hand stroked her delicate hair and it seemed to be much nicer to her now than it had been in the previous episode that I'd watched. The three hugged and said that they would be friends forever. And then the episode ended, with the screen going black. It had lasted less than five minutes, all told. It still made me feel strange and put off. Those puppets were so... odd-looking. And I just couldn't shake the feeling that there was something not right about them. I was also hooked and immediately loaded up the second video. It was like a train wreck, you know, I needed to see how it came out no matter what the carnage looked like. The next two episodes are pretty similar to what I had come to expect. They were called Cohabitation and Family and followed the lives of Lisa and her new roommates. They set up some furniture, they had some getting to know you chatter as wonky music played in the background, making those words hard to hear sometimes. It was a typical stop motion fair, but there were odd refrains sometimes in the middle of the stop motion. During one in particular, the boys, Steve and Michael, were talking with Lisa about what to do for dinner. The stop motion abruptly cut, and you could see five or six seconds of the models just standing as a loud sobbing came from the background. 
Amidst the sobbing, there was a soft but angry voice trying to quiet the crying. Had to rewind a few times in order to catch it. And I remember wondering if this was some sort of artistic film or something. Was the artist trying to make some kind of point or, or something? And maybe he was trying to hide it amidst the stop motion to make it even more avant-garde. It wasn't until the fourth episode that things got bad for Lisa. I noticed that while the first three videos had come out in one a day, the fourth video had taken almost a week to come out. This wouldn't have been strange for any other channel, but the total shift from episode three to episode four was alarming. The video was about five minutes long and seemed to entail Lisa going out on her own one night and getting lost. She had gone out on a walk despite being told not to by the father hand and had gotten herself lost in a forest that had been drawn on white paper. Now these trees were the big swampy kind, you know, the ones you see in kids' art assignments. It was clear that Father Hand was no artist. He wasn't a consistent narrator either, because his voice and his tone seemed to get angrier the longer the episode went on. The condition of the puppets looked ghastly, and that only added to the surreal horror of the show. The Lisa puppet was clearly in bad shape. And halfway through the show, a piece fell off of her and landed on the table. The narration ended abruptly as the music continued over the visual and the graying puppet just standing in place. The sound of someone stomping off was audible over the jangly discord, and the steps sounded heavy and angry. There was a brief moment where the sound of someone begging to be let go could be heard, but it cut away just as the sound of screaming started. The video was edited badly, and an attempt had clearly been made to cut it out. When the show resumed, the Lisa puppet was completed again, with what appeared to be a fresh hunk of meat attached. The place that had fallen off, however, still lay on the table, as though it was no more useful than a snakeskin now. And towards the end of the episode, the Lisa puppet bent over and seemed to weep. She was alone and scared in the forest. The weeping was overlaid by soft and frantic weeping in the background, though I'm not sure we were meant to hear that part. All of a sudden, the father hand came and showed her the way home. It scolded her for running away and told her that she must never do that again. Much like an actual father, the hand seemed relieved as well as angry, and Lisa went with him to the house meekly enough. When they returned, the Steve and Michael puppet did not seem happy to see her. They shunned her silently, and the episode ended with Lisa crying in a corner somewhere. And then the episode faded to black, and the credits rolled. I hovered my mouse over episode 6, not sure if I really wanted to watch it. Episode 4, called Thankless, made episode 5 make a whole lot more sense now. Father Hand was still likely punishing Lisa for running away, though the start of the episode made it very clear that she had just been going on a walk. The episodes were easy enough to follow, but something in them still made me uneasy. Why were these characters living under the Fatherly Hand character? Why did the narrator call them roommates if Father Hand treated some of them like children? The whole show just had an odd, surrealist nature to it, and there seemed to be an underlying story that I just, just wasn't getting. I was invested. I had to see how it came out. Episode 6 was the strangest by far and the comments of the video seemed to prove that I wasn't just going crazy. It was called Melancholy, and the episode started off with the same weird dance music, and a shot of Lisa hunched over and crying. The crying, however, was not the candid sound of it that it had been before. The episode was three and a half minutes of someone sobbing, heartbreakingly. The kind of sobs that were equal parts hopelessness and terror. The camera seemed to be slowly panning in on the intricate face of the meat puppet as the sobs in the background went on and on. I had seen some strange videos in my time, but this one... This one definitely took the cake. The final shot was the eye of the meat puppet, clearly defined, lovingly traced. You could see the meat beginning to mold. There's the bright splotches that decorated the surface and 
Just before the screen faded to black, you could hear the elevated terror in the voice of the person sobbing before it was shut off by the end of the episode. Now, I had to take a break after that one. Reading the comments as I tried to make more sense of what I had just watched, the Meat Man's audience seemed to be a little divided on whether this was an artistic expression or... or something much darker. A user had said that sobbing and screaming had been unique, that he couldn't find them on any of the usual free use sites. Another user questioned whether they were too real or not, thinking this might be part of someone's torture fantasy, but... Others seemed to think that it was just some avant-garde piece that was a little too pompous for its own good. What they did agree on was that even if it was acting, screams were a little too real, and that all of them felt some sort of way about those cries of anguish. I had hoped that maybe Episode 7 would be a return to sanity, but Episode 7, called Jealousy, it's just as weird. The narrator was telling us that the Dawn character was adjusting very nicely to the house. All the tenants loved her. They all wanted to be her friend. And indeed, the father hand, Steve, and Michael were all standing around her and moving animatedly. Only one character, Lisa, didn't seem to want to be friends with Dawn. She seemed to be in another room, still hunkered up and crying. The narrator explained that Lisa was jealous of Dawn that father had become cross with her attitude. The sobs from the previous episode were gone, but there was some other low noises barely discernible over the loud, jangling music. The puppets seemed to be in much better condition as well, as I suppose they had changed the meat on them recently. The father hand came and yelled at Lisa some more, but she just stayed hunkered up and crying. Finally, he left, and the episode ended as the camera zoomed in on the little meat woman, hunkered in her anguish. I looked at the next episode, and I wondered if I really wanted to see more. I mean, it, it felt like I had been watching for hours, but it turned out all seven episodes had taken less than 30 minutes. Something about watching the byplay between the characters had gripped me, and I felt that I needed to finish it. At the same time... There was something much darker here than I had expected. This was like someone's confession. The whole thing felt very intimate, and I felt almost voyeuristic for watching. I clicked the next episode, though, telling myself that another three episodes wouldn't do too much damage. I mean, how wrong I was. Episode 8, called Hatred, opened with Lisa leaning against a paper wall as the others tried to get into her room. They started out nicely asking her to come out, wanting to talk to her, wanting to see her. The narrator told us that Lisa had been shirking her chores, saying unkind things to Father Hand about the other roommates. Father Hand had, of course, shared these things with the others, and now they wanted to talk with her. As the knocks became pounds, all three of them pulling up on the paper doors as they banged and kicked. Lisa pulled her hands to her ears and put her head between her knees. The narrator told us how Michael and Steve wanted to talk with her, and how Dawn was really upset that Lisa had judged her so harshly. As they pounded and banged on the paper door, Father Hand suddenly came into the scene. Lisa looked up from her knees and seemed unsure of what to make of the sudden appearance of the fatherly phalange. Father Hand told her that she had brought discord to the house and that he could no longer ignore her insolence. The hand turned itself into a fist and began to beat the puppet savagely. Chunks of meat fell off and were squashed beneath the pounding. The wire body was twisted and warped. The whole scene was made all the more horrific by the overlying carnival tune that scratched like razors across my brain. It ended as Steve and Michael knocked. The camera zoomed in on the sad pile of meat that Lisa had become. The episode ended abruptly, and when I saw a pale figure staring back at me from the suddenly dark screen... It took me a second to realize the pale and sweating figure it was me. Episode 9, Constriction, was next. There was no question on whether I would watch it or not. I needed to know what came next. Episode 9 was as different from the others as night and day. It was a shaky cam of someone walking through a wood by night. 
A butter yellow light provided a small patch of illumination, and whoever was recording was breathing heavily as they trudged through the woods. The woods were preternaturally silent as they went, and the leaves crunching underfoot were loud and jarring. The video was four minutes long, and three and a half minutes were nothing but walking feet, crunching leaves, and heavy breathing. And then, abruptly, they stopped before a small round stone. The ground before it freshly turned up and put to rest sloppily. Sleep well, Lisa, came the phlegmy voice of the cameraman. And then it all went black. I hit the tenth episode before I could think about it, wanting to see how it ended. Episode 10 Ambiverance seemed to be a return to normal. Dawn was sitting on the couch seeming to laugh at something on a television out of view. Michael and Steve seemed to be milling about, cleaning, or just chatting. The wall that had marked Lisa's room was nowhere to be seen. The father hand looked over them, benevolently, as the narrator told us about Michael looking for a book that he had misplaced, and Dawn watching her favorite show. All seemed well, all seemed normal other than the broken corpse of Lisa that lay on the floor. The damage that Father Hand had done still lay about the ground, and the meat was brown and dry. Flies had begun to circle the meat body, and if one of the puppets had to go near her, they seemed to walk unheeded over her body. The only character who seemed to notice her was the Father Hand. He would look down at her from time to time, almost smugly, and shake his head before looking back at the other happy puppets. Episode 10 went dark, and I was yet again left wondering what I had just seen. The video had managed to move into my head rent-free in less time than it would have taken to watch a movie. I had moved on to the other videos, other activities, but the images were never far from my mind. I'd been known to suggest strange videos to my friends even linking them on Reddit to certain groups. This, however, was not one of them. I was hesitant to talk about it, let alone tell people about it. I didn't want others to suffer under this like I was. And that was probably why I was thinking about it when I saw the poster. I was traveling to work. I work as an expert witness for specific cases. We do a lot of traveling and a lot of waiting, which often leads to the aforementioned boredom. I was driving through Michigan when the call of nature became too much to ignore. Luckily, there was a rest stop up ahead and I was zipping up and heading out of the restroom when I saw the missing persons wall. My eyes found the woman before I could stop myself and my breath caught in my throat as I came up short. The woman's name was Elizabeth Rainey, 23, and she had been missing for the last four months. The poster was new unmarred by yellowing and creasing, and I pulled it easily from the bulletin board. Looking at her face, I realized how much work must have gone into each puppet. Her nose, her wide forehead, and the small dimple in her chin, the dent in her left cheek from some childhood accident. They were all there. They had all been lovingly added on to the porous face Of the meat puppet. I took the poster back to my car, my check-in time approaching quickly, and I called a friend of mine who worked at my local police department. I told him about the girl, about the YouTube channel, about the videos. He said he'd look into it without much enthusiasm. When he called me later that day to thank me for the information, he sounded much more interested in what I had to say. I called him again a few weeks later and offered to buy him drinks if he'd sate my curiosity. He was willing but said that I might not want to know, as bad as I thought I did. Over drinks, he told me the whole sad story. And my friend had a friend too. His friend was an agent with the FBI. After watching the videos, my friend had told his friend. He sent him a link to the channel and asked him to take a look. After watching the drama himself, he had tracked the IP and decided to see what they could find about this guy. Turns out that Elizabeth wasn't the only familiar face that was missing in the Michigan area. Michael Chavez, Steve Charette, and Don Lee were all missing from the same area. 
The IP address was coming from an old house near Lake Huron. The owner, David Matthews, owned the house and quite a lot of acreage out there. When they raided his house, they caught David by surprise and found more than they bargained for. He was keeping them in his basement. The sick bastard had a large, finished basement with four separate rooms. The central room held a couch, a TV, and a large kitchen table with a small set for the show and a camera. The puppets were on a shelf nearby, their bodies gray and sagging off their clothes hanger bodies. The other implement in the room was a large, rusty meat grinder. A meat grinder with strands of rotting meat hanging from the spout. He said the flies had been thick in the room. The sounds of moans had not begun until they started kicking down doors. Don, Michael, and Steve were lying in their respective rooms. Most of them, anyway, he had said, taking a long pull from his beer. He sent me the photos of the crime scene. He wished to God that he hadn't. David had been in the room that had likely belonged to Elizabeth. He had been wearing her dress, the fabric badly stretched around his frame, and was sobbing in the corner. No matter what the agent said to him, his response was always the same, his rocking making a strange grinding noise as his butt slid over the concrete. He said, I shouldn't have played God. I shouldn't have made her sleep. Just kept saying it over and over again. The others didn't say much of anything, my friend told me. He had scooped them to the bone, cutting off fingers and toes and arms and legs so he could grind them up to make their puppets. He'd used tourniquets and animal tranquilizers to keep them alive. Michael and Steve were a little more than torsos, Steve having half a leg and Michael a little more than an elbow. Dawn was missing her legs, but her arms were thankfully intact. She'd only been in the basement for a month, and it seemed like he hadn't had as much time to take from her. They'd gotten all of them out of there, and David Matthews, the meat man, was now in custody. A real win for the good guys, my friend had said. His stare a thousand miles long. Though none of them will ever walk again. The men are in a catatonic state, the girl only gibberish. At least we saved them before he could finish his sick play. They had yet to find Lisa's body, but he told me that they hadn't given up yet. As I sat there going over the facts as I write it, it, it all just runs through my head like a, like a rat in a maze. Every moan, every sob was this sicko harvesting his victims so that he could replace the flesh of his precious puppets. I was an unwilling participant in this, watching and encouraging the sick bastard to continue. I want to forget it, but I can't. I may never forget what I saw in that short hour of my life. I may never forget the terrible knowledge that the meat man has invested in me. And I may never find my curiosity sated for quite some time. I think my days of roaming YouTube and my boredom may be at an end. Hey there, kids, it's me. Mr. Cube Pasta, I want to tell you thank you so much for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to today's episode of the podcast on the podcast. Tonight, I'm going to let you know about a couple of authors that I really love their work of, and I think all of you have too. Usually in my live streams, you guys will tell me some of your favorite stories, but these ones constantly show up, and I feel like a lot of you don't know that there's actual novels that continue on from the stories that you just hear on YouTube. And in some cases, I even do the audiobooks for them that you can find on Audible. Three of which I want to let you know about right now. The Neverglades, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3 are available right now on Amazon, both on Kindle and on paperback. And My Tiny Town Just Got Put on Lockdown is available on Amazon. 
as one major novel that contains both season one and season two, which is not done on the channel yet, as well as a brand new one called The Study, an Effluvium Hayes novel, which continues the story of My Tiny Town Just Got Put on Lockdown. And of course, I think one of everybody's favorite series is on here, Tales from the Gas Station, currently has a fourth volume that has just come out. I did the audio books for volume one through three, four will come out eventually. So without further ado, I wanna give a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tanya Oren, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, That One Guy, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Rebecca Harper, Murky Moo, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Caddo Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Chaos Art, Cryolinian, Milk and Meal, Zachary Grafius, Gorang Tramagasi, Maria Walker, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchop, Dirt Diver, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, Guy Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Croconut 509, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Trickin, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zaccardi, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lamb Guy Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so very, very much. Thank all of you who are in the description down below, and honestly, thank all of you that can give anything, even when it comes down to just $1. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Sweet dreams.